If I've ever had a friend Lord I know it too And I need you now This year is the season for the prophetic word of God to be spoken for. Let me tell you, there's a rumbling that is going on in the earth right now. And the foundations of Satan are being shaken to the core. God is about to usher in the most powerful move of God that you have seen. But if we're going to be the vessel that God is to speak through in 20. 24, what is the process that we need to go through so that we can hear the voice of God, so that we can know the voice of God, and so that we can understand the prophetic utterance that God wants to speak to our nations, to our cities, uh, to the district that we live in, uh, within our own families. We see today in 2024, as never before, families are being torn apart, and so the prophetic voice is needed within our families. So if you're a born-again believer and you live in a district, if you're a born-again believer and you live in a nation, if you're a born-again believer and you live in a family, this message is directed straight to you. God wants you to be his prophetic voice in 20. 24. Did you say, I don't hear the voice of God? It's a very interesting question or statement. I don't hear the voice of God. Have you ever asked yourself why you don't hear the voice of God? In this study, we have begun looking at that, and we will continue that today. But by way of a text for this message, let us go back to that powerful book of Ezekiel. I don't think there's a book in the Old Testament that comes closer to how God spoke to his servant. Ezekiel and what Ezekiel had to do for God to speak to him. In Ezekiel chapter 3 and verses 20 through to 27, we read some powerful statements uh, that if we catch these statements, believer, if we catch these statements, church, uh, it must transform our relationship with God. God is speaking and he comes uh, to the prophet Ezekiel and he says uh, these words, the hand of the Lord was upon me. And God said to me, listen, get out and to go into the desert. And there I will speak to you. Before we go to verse 23, let me open up these three powerful statements even within this verse. The hand of the Lord was on me. So how do we hear the voice of God when we're sitting in the palm of his 
How do we hear the voice of God? We heard this last time I brought the message to you. When we begin to understand and live and be entwined in the heart of God, when we begin to understand the fatherhood of God, that God is my father. Chan of the Lord was upon me. You see, the hand covers everything around us. The hand is a hand of warfare. The hand is a hand of protection. See, Ezekiel, right from chapter 1, began to understand uh, the hand of God. He says uh, in chapter 1 and verse uh, uh, one. Now it came to pass in the 30th year of the fourth month, uh, on the fifth day of the month, I was amongst the captives by the river Sheba, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of God. And it says, and the hand of the Lord, down to verse 3, and the hand of the Lord was there upon me. When the hand of the Lord was upon me. In Ezekiel 37, my favorite chapter, it says that I was, that God came and put me in the arm of his hand. This is a relationship. This is a father-son relationship. This is what God ordained when he sent Jesus Christ to the cross uh, to die for your sin and my sin. He ordained this so that he could come again and place us in the palm of his hand. He came so that he could come again and take us by our hand. And walk in that garden of Eden again. But let me read on. Then the hand of the Lord was there on me. And he said to me, get up and go to the desert. You see the cities. I live in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. And this city, like your city, wherever it may be, is polluted. It is worldly. There is so much activity. Everyone is busy. Neighbors no longer even know neighbors. There's so much going on that God has been pushed to the corner. And you see, God is saying to Ezekiel here, I need you to come out from the filth. I need you to come out from the corrupt influences of society. I need you to come aside. I need you to come with me, Ezekiel. Come with me, Ezekiel. Come with me, Ezekiel. Not in the city of corruption. Not in the city of influence. Not in the nation that is controlled by the activities of Satan. Come with me. To the desert, where there's no media, where there's no mobile phones, where there's no computers. Come with me, Tom James. Come out of your environment and come into your closet. Come with me, Tom James. To a place where I can speak with you. I have spoken to you about the season of over two years where I would rise at 4 a.m. in the morning and go down to a brook uh, half a kilometer from where I live. And, it, and at that brook, I would sit right next to the water. And there was a huge tree there with, with roots coming out that became my chair, as it were. And there for two, two and a half hours every morning, uh, I went into the desert plain where God could speak to me. God is saying to Ezekiel here, come. And thirdly, he says, come to a place 
where I can speak. Yeah, but there's more. Listen, church. Listen, my friend. There's more because when we come out, when we come out from the natural realm into the supernatural realm, when we come out from this environment that we live in and we go into that supernatural realm, uh, the desert, if you like, uh, that supernatural realm, when we go into that supernatural realm, the next verse uh, has some exciting news for us. Listen. So I got up and went out into the plain, into the desert. And listen, and the glory of the Lord was standing there. And the glory of the Lord was everywhere. Look around. Look around. The glory of the Lord was everywhere. You see, this is not a humanistic realm. Oh, he may have been in the desert which had dirt and dust and thorn bushes. But no, 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 he was in a place that was God's domain. He was in a place that was covered with God. So I got up and went out into the desert. And the glory of the Lord was standing there, the, like the glory I saw by the Sheba River. This glory was so great. The next phase of this verse tells us this. This glory was so great that I could not stand in its presence. I fell on my face and listened. This is emptying ourselves. You see, no longer is there any strength in Tom James when I fall and submit to the glory of God. Oh, so great. So great that I fell. I could not stand. When we are empty of ourselves, then the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is able to come in. And it says here, verse 24, Then the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. He spoke to me and said, God, God, my Father, God, my Heavenly Father, God, my Father, the Creator of the universe, came into me and raised me up. You see, friends, you say, I can't hear the voice of God. You need to go into your closet. You need to go to your Bethel. You need to go to that area where there is desert. There is nothing. Joshua spent hundreds of hours seeking God with Moses in the mountains, in the tabernacle. He wanted to know God. He would even stay. After Moses had left, uh, and oh yes, Joshua felt the presence of God, just as you have felt the presence of God. But you know, all of those 40 years that Joshua was the lieutenant to Moses, the servant to Moses, all of those 40 years, we do not have recorded one word. where God spoke to Joshua. Joshua and you, just like you and I, we know about God. We go to church on a Sunday and we raise our hands and, and we feel his presence. But do we know him? 
Yesterday I was the wonderful opportunity of spending the day in the presence of God. And in the morning, we played all day, my wife and I, we played all day worship songs from Jason Crabb and his family. Oh, beautiful songs, beautiful songs. Just, you can feel the presence of God. And then towards the end of the, this two or three hours of them singing, they show these video clips of Jason through his life. And the trials he had, he was open about some of these trials. And one of the trials that he went through, he was a young married man. Loved God, committed to God, wanted to be a preacher, but God put him on the road as a musician, a Christian music musician. He wrote some powerful songs. And one day, I'm about to go on a tour, and Jason's sitting down and he's writing a song that God had given him, and his wife came to him and said, I have some news for you. She said, we're going to hang a baby. Oh, Jason, tears began to flow down his face. He was so excited. He embraced his wife and, and they spent the afternoon rejoicing in God for the revelation that God uh, was going to use them uh, to bring forth another child into this world. But the weeks went by and things started to go wrong with the pregnancy. And then Jason's wife lost the baby. And Jason, being the head of the home, says, I've got to be strong. Inside he was weeping, but he said, I've got to be strong. And embraced and helped his wife through this moment. And then months went by and his wife fell pregnant again. And again, she lost the second child. And then there was the third. And again, she lost the third child. And Jason gets down on his knees. He's angry with God. My God! You see, we can... We live an up and down existence, or we can know them, and nothing will shake the foundation of our relationship with God. And this is what Joshua was going through. This is what Jason went through. But praise God, like David, many of his psalms, he would start off and it would be, woe is me. He was struggling. But Jason got down after a little while. And he said, Father, it doesn't matter what happens. We'll serve you. Doesn't matter if we never have children, I will serve you. I don't understand it, but I will serve you. And I'm sure Joshua did that. Forty years of serving as Moses' assistant and feeling the presence of God, seeing the fire of God, not hearing the voice of God. Is that you? Well, again, you weren't on your own because uh, there was Moses. Moses was born to be a leader from the very womb of his mother's belly. God had set him aside uh, to lead Israel out of their bondage. But Moses grew up under a heathen king. Moses was taught the skills of man. Oh, Moses knew that he was called of God. But he tried to do it the way a Pharaoh would do it. 
He tried to do it uh, the way a leader would do it in the natural realm. And we know that he failed. And he fled. It says in Hebrews that he fled to find his family. He fled to develop this intimate relationship with God Almighty. Forty years. Perhaps every day he would go out. Mom, where are you? Now he knew because his father-in-law was a priest. So he knew that this, this mountain over here, it was the, the mountain of God. So he thought, I'll go there. I'll find God there. I'll go out into the desert. You see, again, like Ezekiel, he goes out where no man is. He takes his sheep where there's no grass to feed them. He takes his sheep uh, every day for a period, maybe an hour, maybe two hours, maybe all day sometimes. There he would get down. <laughs> God of heaven, God creator, where are you? And after 40 years, he has a revelation. <laughs> you see, the question today is how do you see God? Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1, he says this, be imitators. Be a, a clone of God. Well, how do we become an imitator of someone we don't really know or don't really trust? By going in the desert for 40 years, if need be. By not giving up, by saying, I'm going aside. I'm cutting myself off from the pleasures of this world. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be uh, a Nazarite, if you like. I'm just going to focus on God. You see, Peter could get out of that boat when his eyes were fixed on Jesus and not the waves, not the environment. Then he can do the impossible. Moses said, I don't care. I'll walk these miles. I'll sit in the heat. I'll cry out to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords until I understand that God is. Paul says, be imitators, clones of God in everything we do. Now, this has been a great challenge to me. You see, when I'm driving, I can't speed anymore. Because God wouldn't speed if he was driving. When I'm driving, I can't go through the red light. This is begins to flash. Because God wouldn't go through it. You know, when I'm talking with my wife, whether she's right or wrong, I can't become aggressive or argumentative because God wouldn't. When I look at my church and when I look at my nation, I can't look at my nation or I can't look at my church the way that I would look at it. I must see it how God sees it. It says, be imitators or clones of God in everything you do, for then you will represent your father. And you will become his son and his daughter. You see, the divine plan of God was that Genesis tells us in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, 
Now, the, the problem here that I have is that the majority of Christians, they're serving God the Creator, God the Provider, God the Resource, God the Healer. And all those things are correct. But it doesn't make us a son or a daughter. She says, in the beginning, and then it says, God spoke, and there was light. I'm not going to go into the light, but none of us could have stand. That light was so powerful that just like with Ezekiel in chapter 3, we would fall on our face if we were alive in that part. Just like the Apostle John in Revelation, when he came into heaven and he came into the presence of Christ, he fell to his face as though he were dead. But then we read that God created Adam. Out of the dust of the earth, Adam lay in that ground in the shape of a man. And, you know, you and I are like that. We have been created. But because of the sin of Adam, it's like we are dust in the ground. We are controlled by the environment. We are controlled by the sin. We have been born into sin. But then it says, and God breathed life into Adam. But verse 26 to 28, it says, God said, let us create man in our likeness and in our image. What is God saying there? It's not, let's give man the ability to be omnipresent. Let's give man the ability to have all knowledge. Let's give man the ability to be all powerful. Let's give man the ability to be saturated in love. And yet, it detailed all of those things. It, all of those things were implanted into man when God created him in, the, in his image and his likeness. But what God is saying here is let's put our heart into the hand of man. So like Jesus says in John chapter 17, he says, Father, make them one as we are one. At that moment of creation, God was making Adam one with him. He, was, he became as the son of Almighty God. Eve became the daughter of Almighty God. There was a father-son-daughter relationship. If, uh, Genesis chapter 3 says that God would walk in the garden with them. Throughout the Old Testament, there are occasions where we see people like David who had the heart of God and God would come to them. The prophets, God would come to them. But generally speaking, the Old Testament believers, they knew God as their deliverer. They knew God as the creator. They knew God as the God of heaven. But they didn't know him as they found. And then in the divine plan of God, Christ Jesus came to this earth, born of a virgin. He came to this earth, emptying himself. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 tells us, emptying himself of all deity. He came as the son of man. He came, yes. 
to heal the sick. He came, yes, to bring teaching to the people. He came, yes, to cast out demons. But he came with a purpose, to die on the cross so that we could live. When Christ Jesus walked to that cross and when he hung on that cross uh, and when he cried out the words, uh, it is finished. Death was finished. And the gates of heaven were open again. And the father now could come with his children, all who were born again, and walk in the garden once again as he did with Adam and Eve. Has he walked in the garden with you? You know, Paul goes on in Ephesians uh, chapter 4 and, and he says these words, uh, and continue to walk surrendered to the wonderful love of Christ, uh, for he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was so uh, was pleasing to God like a, an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. Is our death pleasing to God? The natural death uh, the sinful death of my life, where I no longer live for Tom James, but I live for only God. Was that, and is that a sweet aroma of admiration to God? The verse, the verse goes on, says, for the light makes everything visible. You see, one moment you couldn't see God. You see, let us go back to Joshua. For 40 years, he saw the fire. He saw the cloud. He felt the presence. But then at the death of Moses, he sees the light. He sees God for the first time. God speaks to him for the first time. Joshua, at this point, begins to understand that God is his father. Verse goes on and says, This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead. And Christ will give you light. Christ will give you revelation. Christ will speak to you. Strong's interpretation of this part of the verse says this, Christ will pour upon thee the light of divine truth. This is what happened to Ezekiel. Don't in the desert. This is what happened to Moses, the burning bush. This is what happened to Joshua. Now, each of those occasions followed with many, many, many struggles as Israel opposed them as the pharaohs and the leaders oppose them. And that is the same with us. You see, when we, when we move into this point uh, where God, we understand that God is our father, the attacks will begin to happen. Let me give you an example as we begin to close today. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, 13 and 14, Samuel the prophet comes to Saul. Saul had sinned. And Samuel comes with the message that God is, God's anointing has been lifted off you because of your sin. 
Wow. Have we allowed sin in our life? And that's why we don't hear the voice of God. Has the anointing of God been lifted off us? And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. Have we been a fool? You see, God comes to the church at Ephesus and he lists these, all of these good things about the church of Ephesus. But then he said, you've left your third stuff. You've become religious. You have not kept the commandments of God. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. And then Samuel goes on, now your kingdom shall not continue. Listen, for the Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. Now, listen to this. You see, this is important. When we get the heart of God, when we become like David here and we have the heart of God, when we become like Ezekiel and go into the desert and the glory of God is there, when we be like Moses and we go to the desert for 40 years trying out to God and we have that burning bush experience, when we be like Joshua and for 40 years we serve as a servant, we feel his presence but not hear his voice and then one day, Listen to what God's got to say about that person. When we move into that point, when we understand that God is not our creator, that God is not our healer, that God is not our provider, and yet he's all of those things. But when we come to the revelation that God is our Father, that our heart is linked to his heart and they have become one listen to what happens in first samuel 13 when this happened with david and the lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart and the lord has commanded him you see when we become a son of god God speaks to us. He gives us direction. He's telling Ezekiel what to do. Man, what Ezekiel had to do. Most of us would run and hide. But he did it because he knew the sonship. He knew that his heart was one with God. And so the Lord has commanded him, listen, to be a commander over his people. Because you have not kept what the Lord has commanded you. So when we move into that sonship, we move into that place where we become a son and a daughter of God. And then God commands us to be his mothers. That is, in 2024, to be the prophetic voice of God within our homes, to be the prophetic voice within the district and the cities that we live in, to be a prophetic voice over the nations that we live in. Will that be you? For that to happen, you must come to the deep, intimate revelation that you are a son or a daughter of God Almighty and that God Almighty is your father. And every day he walks with you in his gut. Almighty God. Thank you again for this beautiful opportunity of sharing your word. 
let it go forth into hundreds of lives. Let them catch the essence of what has been said today. Let them come into the revelation that they must go out of the natural realm into the supernatural realm, the desert. And there your glory is. And there they understand and come into the revelation that you are their father. Let it happen, I pray. Almighty God. This is Prophet Tom. It's been such a joy to be with you today. Bless you and have a powerful weekend. Amen.